A priest I knew years ago used to say that this was the Sunday we don't need to prepare a homily because Jesus himself explains the gospel. His comment would be true if a homily was just that, if it was just an explanation, such as one might find in a dictionary. But instead, a homily is meant to be an opening of the word. And the more rich, the more dense the word is that's presented to us from the scripture, I believe the more effort is required to understand it and to hear it and proclaim it. That word that we celebrate today in today's scriptures is word with a capital W. It's the name of the person of the word, the person of the word that we also call Son of God, is the one who was with God in the beginning, through whom all things were made, and who is himself God, fully divine. And the title word is appropriate because we know that even in ordinary speech, A word is invisible, and yet it is something of great power. Think of how the right word at the right time really makes an impact on a person, can even change their lives. And words reveal the person. Words show outwardly what is hidden deep in our hearts and minds. If this is true of the words we exchange as human beings, how much more the word of God? This word, this personal word, is pure and simple in its being. That word simply is. And that word became one of us, came and lived among us as an ordinary workman whose name is Jesus, a man approachable, humble, open. So if the divine word in its purity and simplicity is born among us, living among us as an ordinary human being, Why would it then we say that the word is so hard to grasp, to understand, and to live? It's because our minds and our hearts are so full of other things. Among the false notions that sometimes prevent the word from getting through to us are notions about what God is like. Sometimes our image of God is so saturated with fear and a sense of wrath and judgment that it's hard for us to hear the message, the simple message, God is love. Sometimes because our lives are so full of many things, it's easy for us to overlook what simple things really have to offer to us. If our sense of happiness is all about the next big thrill, we will never know the joy that little children know who can discover the whole universe in their own backyard. It is God who is simple, but it is we who are complicated. God empties himself toward us, but we are so full of ourselves, we can't receive it. And so the simple message of who God is and who we are meant to be is lost, like seeds thrown away where nothing can grow. I think sometimes of the vacant lots we see around our neighborhoods, full of trash and weeds, the soil ruined by human occupation. Before we were here, that very soil was rich farmland. But even in such desolate places, now and again a wildflower will spring up, the seed brought there by the wind or by a passing bird, because the nature of things in this world is to grow and to thrive and to give life. And if this is so for the grass of the field, as Jesus calls it, how much more there is for us. What amazing things the human being is capable of if only we would empty ourselves to be pure and simple as God made us to be and allow God to have his way with us. Jesus, the Gospels tell us, left behind the builder's trade in order to embrace his father's business, the new work of our restoration, of our renovation, making us new again. And Jesus knew what draws the human heart. He knows that what attracts us are those things that are of themselves very good and very beautiful. Even a heart overwhelmed with grief and anxiety, one that is bruised and broken, can still be touched by something beautiful, perhaps a song, perhaps the photo of a loved one, perhaps something beautiful of nature to look at, perhaps just a kind gesture or even a simple word. These things touch the human heart and once again make us simple, able to receive the depth of God's word for us. 
And that is why Jesus speaks in parables. He gives us these little stories that can elicit from us something of amazement and something of wonder. And if wonder can be awakened in us, we are on our way to begin the spiritual journey. The destination of that journey is what Jesus calls the kingdom of heaven. Again, the kingdom of heaven is not a place. It is a person. It is Jesus himself. It is God. It's not a castle in the clouds. It's a different kind of place because it's not really a place at all. St. Teresa of Avila described it as a palace made of crystal, many walls and many rooms, and yet all illuminated from the luminous presence deep within. And she said that this image of the human soul was appropriate because for most of us, we spend most of our time looking outward like the guards on the castle wall looking into the distance. If we would simply turn, look inward for a moment, we could discover deep inside of us the living presence of God. The kingdom of heaven is within, as Christ taught us. And as we are allowed in these moments with the word to open our minds and hearts in a new way, to perceive that we're dwelling inside, we discover that God indeed has made his home among us.